Today, dear viewers, I'm going to take you back in time some 2,350 videos or so to the far off distant year of 2014. You see, uh, as someone with a very long YouTube career that people often look back on and see through, I'm trying to fucking, my mouse is not working from this distance, uh, I'll just have to use this trackpad. Um, you know, with, with a long YouTube career like mine, people will look back at it, they'll look at the view counts of old videos, or they'll they'll just remember what it was like at various points, and they will, you know, either talk about the past of my career or judge the present of it in comparison to the past in ways that just, to me, seem to completely have missed what actually happened throughout my history as a YouTuber, because a lot of that data changes dramatically over time. For instance, a video that might be one of my top, like, best performing videos of all time uh, might have been total shit when it first came out. And when you look at it in retrospect, you think, wow, this was such a huge success. And it's like, actually, that success came years later for totally different reasons. And there's always reasons why anything happens. Um, so I'm going back to... So we're going to start post-Pony era, because this era has been archived very thoroughly... Uh, you could even say it's been thoroughly analyzed. Um, I don't know how much of it has been, has happened publicly. I mean, if you click on this video, Thoroughly Analyzing Twilight's Kingdom, the, the, the season four finale review that I did, it came with a 20 minute audio like link in the description that went to like a basic description of my time in that fandom. But like I've done, if you, if you have the commentaries, actually, I don't even know if this commentary is fucking available right now. I don't think I've re-uploaded it yet because I haven't found it. But if you were a patron um, at the time, or if you are one at the time that I finally get it back online, uh, the, the commentary I did on this era goes into extreme depth about everything that happened. But we're going to be continuing from there. So to set the stage, it's, uh, let's find out the exact month. Unfortunately, YouTube gives you very little data on the playlists tab. Here's who I was once upon a time. This has 65,000 views uh, and was published May 11th, 2014. So this is it. This is the last My Little Pony video I ever did. The channel was still called Digibrony. Um, I would have switched it not long after this to Digibro, which was my name first, incidentally, in case anyone was wondering. Um, so I just tagged an NY on for the Pony Days. So that's the end, or the start of May, the end of the Pony era, and at the time, I'm already transitioning hard into trying to become an anime YouTuber. So if you scroll back through uh, my history here, you'll see that there's a shitload of these anime hype train videos. So what had happened is, at the time, I was making anime analysis videos on the main channel, and they were not getting that many views, like uh, Useless Anime Review, Samurai Flamenco. I mean, this one probably had even less than others at the time. Uh, today it's got 31k. It would have probably had, like, less than 2,000 uh, for a very long time. Like, it having 31k is kind of amazing. But again, all of my videos have way, way more views now than they did before. Because people binge watch my channel. When people find me, they, they watch a bunch of stuff in sequence. Most of my views come from sidebar clicks. They come from people watching one and then continuing. Um, most people who I've talked to have told me that like they got into me and then they binged everything and then they kept up with it as it goes. Now, if you know me, you know that I'm always saying that that's the right way to consume media. And obviously, YouTube's pretty different because you'll often just, like, wait for something to come out. It comes out. You watch it. But you'll never feel the same kind of hype that you feel towards a YouTuber just from watching their videos one at a time. Like, when you're marathoning it, it's like this obsession. It's like it's in your mind. There's a lot of YouTubers who I've marathoned all their videos, then tried to keep up with it, you know, as it goes, and just completely lost interest. Like, HDHD Productions, good example. You know, just totally didn't care anymore after I would marathoned it. Um, so anyways, this is the, after around this time, I'm, I'm trying to make anime analysis videos. They're not really doing all that well. So I decide I want to try to cover currently airing shit as it's going. Um, so I create this alternate channel, Digi does anime, and I don't even see, like, I don't remember how I advertised it. Cause I don't see any video that obviously advertises it. Um, I'm sure I did. 
somewhere in one of these main channel videos. Something about my career is that for a very long time, I was really bad at marketing. I didn't understand the way that people don't consume your shit by like paying full attention to it and watching every video. Most people, even subscribers, you really got to drag them by the collar, kicking and screaming to anywhere you want them to go. Like, you really have to hammer it into people's heads. You have to keep mentioning something over and over again in your videos. You have to mention it out loud. You cannot have text on screen explaining that you've got something going on because nobody's going to read the fucking text. A lot of people aren't even paying attention to the video in the first place. You can't just fucking have, like, a side note in one video because if that video is not a huge success, then nobody fucking sees it. You have to every single time mention this thing and that's why I was mentioning I am game so much for a while and I, I'm still continuing to do so and uh, will be more in the future because like you have to do that to grow a channel that's how YMS grew his gaming channel by putting clips at the end of every single video so anyways I started the anime hype train every single video starts with me saying holy shit that was the catchphrase um and there's a fucking lot of these but they were not very successful I mean not that I really expected them to be um, it was more just a way to try to establish myself as more of a voice in the anime community because at the time I was only known for pony YouTubing, even though my history was all in anime YouTubing, um, or not YouTubing, but anime writing, you know, I'd never done it on YouTube. So I figured that if I wanted to get into the swing of things and have like people who watch seasonal shit. Uh, understand me and also like I hadn't been watching anime for a while so it was like an excuse to get back in and start like you know uh, learning what's new and what's going on what are the trends so yeah anime hype trains going on for a while on this digi does anime channel now if you know the digi does anime channel today you probably know it for the fact that it hosted the asterisk war sucks series and immediately after that is mostly just, like, a whole shitload of fucking totally random re-uploads. Um, and this is because, well, we'll get to why this happened eventually. But, like, if you scroll down far enough, you will eventually reach the anime hype train. Um, so, yeah, it ended, like, four, oh my god, it's been four fucking years. It's been four years! Ah! I'm old! I'm an old fuck! Uh, but anyways, um, a little while after that had ended, I, I brought uh, back a sort of version of it with the Eat Along Diary of Kofuku Graffiti that I did for a little while. Um, yeah, and then we got all these re-uploads, and then we got, again, Asterisk War two years ago. Channel hasn't really been used since. But yeah, it was originally for the anime hype train. So this is chugging along. It's not really doing much. Uh, I make my final pony video. And then immediately after that, I was like, I want it to be clear that this channel is now going to be like a variety channel. It was not intended to just be an anime channel. It was intended to be like, what the hell ever. And so the first thing I made was a Game of Thrones video because I had not really cared for Game of Thrones for a very long time. I had pretty much avoided it. Uh, my family all got into it, so I decided to try it out. I ended up liking it. I made a video about sort of what I thought the appeal of it was like what it what made it make sense to me even this having almost 10,000 views is still a lot more than it had at the time um it definitely had probably like a thousand or two thousand at the time um because like I I thought that just by talking about Game of Thrones it would automatically get a whole lot of views however you will quickly see that the thumbnail of this video is dog shit and has nothing to do with Game of Thrones at all. Because, again, this is before I realized how important thumbnails were. Now, for a while, you know, I had... I used to have, like, some cool thumbnails for certain episodes of MLP, which were designed... This guy named Jowie Bean did, like, a... Uh, he was, like, making his own episode title cards for each episode, like, in the style of 90s episode title cards. So I was just using those. But, um... But yeah, like, I never even had really considered the idea that thumbnails mattered towards view counts at all um, in this period. So yeah, that's why that, that video is paltry. Then you got this one. Two shows, two nights, two crowds, a social observation. This one is just an edited vlog with some, um, some extra visuals and shit on it. Actually, barely. Maybe not even really edited. It's just a vlog. I mean, it, there is tons of cutting. 
um, 4,000 views. So now we're getting to where we're talking about videos that still, to this day, Monkey Jones has top comment from one year ago saying, probably your best video. I think he probably sorted my videos from most popular to least and just left that comment on the least popular video. Um, it is a fun video, though. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. I think it's a good video. But, yeah, so... So anyways, we've got the, you know, Digi does anime, Digi, Digibro After Dark at the time was mostly like, every once in a while I would just do a podcast with my friends or something, so, you know, here's me, Victor, and my cousin Boyd talking about Godzilla, um, man, Boyd looks very different now from how he does in this video, uh, yeah, barely any views, whatever, the After Dark channel was, was just kind of as it is now, just like whatever I had that didn't fit somewhere else that I had wanted to make. So eventually, I'm like, all right, I want to get serious. I want to make like a really fucking interesting YouTube series. Like I had felt like I was really limited by the pony sphere. I wanted to make something heady and interesting and experimental and fucking wild. And I thought Lane would be the perfect excuse to do that. Now again, 46,000 views, this is way better than it was at the time. It had about 2,000 views for at least the first year of its existence. I don't know when this got up to 46k. Um, I'm guessing the other parts are not that high because I'm guessing that's probably... Like, anytime you do a series... Yeah, this one has 26k. Anytime you do a series, part one always has the most views because people will click on it just out of curiosity. And then... Uh, not come back unless one episode has like a unique thumbnail or fucking some kind of title that catches people's attention and they like that one gets more than previous parts and that's obnoxious in its own right so so at this time i'm doing these lane videos you know whatever and i start to think well i'm not really gaining a new anime audience at any kind of exceptional rate i'm just looking over and may's looking at um some kind of sex scene in day dead dead demons day to day to day destruction um anyway so on the on the um on the channel i'm thinking if i can't gain a new anime audience i'll just try to convince the audience i currently have to get into anime although i think this episode here um so this one <laughs> this really terrible title card uh is for anime stuff a series that i wanted to make that was in the style of idea channel and the reason i did this and you'll see that i've got like pretty good pretty decent lighting on this video i look really good in this video i look like a pretty boy um I'm talking about something that I had observed on my anime blog years before about identifying animes by their episode count, whatever. Point being, I made this to try to, like, get onto Idea Channel. Like, I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to try to, like, pitch to them. I think if they had just started the games version of Idea Channel and I wanted to pitch to them an anime version, I did not end up trying to do this in any way because I wasn't that satisfied with how the video came out. But, um... But yeah, that had almost no views at the time. Again, I'm surprised it has as many as it does right now. Um, so I continued the lane videos, uh, made some some interesting little vlogs. Do you feel like a local of the place you live? This is one where I eat pizza out in my backyard. Um, and uh, oh, this is where I ruined my fucking um, shirt. Again, 7,000 views. That's, you know, uh, yeah, this shirt had has like a text box in it because it's a, it's panel two from fucking dinosaur comics and i wrote on it in pen and it could not come out so it just permanently says thoroughly and out thorough thorough analysis on it uh so here we have how we how to get into current anime this was my big attempt to try to teach my uh my little pony fans how they because a lot of them were like i want to get into anime i just don't know shit about it and i was like all right um, like, well, most people watch stuff while it's airing, so let me explain, like, how that works, where you can find this stuff, like, what you can do. Now, this video was originally supposed to be an edited video, and I was going to use a Nendoroid, um, like, in front of a little green screen square, like, sort of the style of Anthony Fantano's videos, but with a Nendoroid, and it was going to be voiced by this girl, Chi-Chi, 
um, who's a voice actress and singer, but, uh, she took a really long time to get me back, like, her first paragraph, like, try, like, trial version, and I was not satisfied with her performance of it, so I just decided to do it as a vlog, uh, and it, you know, again, barely got any views. Once again, I still didn't really understand the importance of thumbnails, as you can tell by these thumbnails. Um, so then I did spring 2014 anime worth checking out. It's like, hey, uh, you know, not only did I teach you how to watch the current shows, but here's some current shows that you should check out. My fucking butt chin. Look at this fucking pause shot. This is awful. Um, again, 7,000 views closer to what it was at the time. Still would have been less than that. It still would have been like 2,000. So, so I wrapped up the Lane series. Uh, the, you know, here's the last part. This one has 93k views because it's because it's normal, I guess. That's really funny that this is way more views than the rest of the series because the rest of the videos are way better than this one. This one's actually not very good. I just wanted to. Oh god, I fucking accidentally clicked on it and then clicked back, and now I have to scroll all the fucking way back down the fucking playlist because YouTube's fucking playlists are the stupidest bullshit in the fucking world. I don't understand. I'm just going to have to fucking edit a clip here, right? No, no. I can fucking passionately rant. Why does nothing about the fucking playlists work correctly at all? Why are they finicky when you keep clicking load more for long enough? It'll just start adding in shit. Usually at the end, there'll be like 20 videos that just say like removed by user, but like they're not even real videos. They're just at the end. There's just a bunch of blank shit. Uh, if you click on anything, you're fucked. The stupid putting the face here, apparently on mobile, that's above the videos. And the reason that's there is because I made it so other channels could access the playlist to, uh, to like, add stuff to it. But it doesn't even fucking work. Like, After Dark is supposed to be able to add videos to this playlist, but they don't show up. So what the fuck is the point of the whole thing there, um, indicating who added it to the playlist? I mean, who fucking cares in the first place who added it to the fucking playlist? And, like, it gives you the time codes but no other information. I just want the dates and the view counts. That's, like, the only thing I would want is the dates and the view counts. And also not for it to stop every 100 because I am trying to rant as long as I can and I have to go through, like, 2,000 fucking videos. This is how many videos I make. This is how many Digibro videos there are. So if you've never been a patron before and you've just been watching these for years, this is how much free fucking entertainment you've gotten. You fucking... <laughs> I'm not gonna say... <laughs> I'm just trying to be funny. I'm not actually mad. I am, though. Give me your fucking money. Why don't... <laughs> what do you need it for? Like, I'm entertaining thousands. Sometimes millions. With my... With my gold. My gold! And you're just like, uh, I've got money because I have to, I have to live. I have to, I work a job so I can go home and own my house. And I'm like, what are you doing? What, what's the point of your house? What do you need a house for? Huh? What's the, what's so good about having a fucking house? You could have Digibro analysis videos all the time. Fund my career. I'm still doing this just so I can get back. That's how many fucking videos I have. So if I haven't made my point... Alright, here we go. So, useless anime knowledge. I had no idea that vi that video has got 95,000 views. I don't know where the fuck those came from. It had no views at the time. Um, I didn't even know that that video had a bunch of views on it. Um, until just now. So we have Sword Art Online and Analytical Diatribe. Now, this is obviously the biggest transformation. This video is a whole different ball game from how it was when it came out. And part of that is because this video did not used to have a thumbnail. Originally, the thumbnail was just, uh, like, foot, you know, some random piece of footage from Terra Online that was completely incomprehensible. It was totally nondescript. It made no fucking sense. Again, I didn't even realize thumbnails were particularly important at the time. So, uh, again... My anime videos had all done, like, 2,000 views a piece on the Digibro channel. Like everything since the My Little Pony finale had done shit views. This video comes out, and in the first week or so, it does about 20,000 views. So, that was a huge deal for me at the time. Because even though I'd, I'd regularly gotten way the fuck more views than that on my Pony videos, you know, like, they... 
season four videos were averaging about 70k views until i switched to the s4 diary then they were averaging 40k views i had several videos that had gotten over 300k at the time but 20,000 was enough to be excited about because i had not gotten anything made any progress in the anime sphere at the time so this video steadily kept gaining views and as i got more popular this video got more popular so by the end of the year, it was probably at like 50k. Um, in fact, we can just go into the analytics right here and fucking straight up break it down where it was at at what times. And we can look at the peaks because first we got to fucking make it lifetime. Because a lot of my videos that have a shitload of views, there's usually multiple big spikes. And you can see that happening right here. So, like, even though the videos still get views, like, regularly, it's the spikes that really make it, um, you know. So, like, here we go. 3,500 views on the day it came out. So, yeah, paltry compared to what, like, if I put out a video today and it got 3,500 views by the end of the day, I'd be pretty upset. You know, like, I'd be like, oh, shit, uh, this is not good. So, so it's, you know, it's averaging a few, few hundred. You got a thousand here at some point. And then, uh, you know, it's doing decently. And then in 2015, all of a sudden, on fucking September 12th, 2015, it gets 15,000 views in a day. Now, if I had to guess what was going on here, I would say that another really big video came out around this time. Or this might have been when I hit 100K. We're going to find that out later. But, like... When I hit 100,000 subs, um, basically, YouTube just started treating my channel differently. It started promoting me way more heavily. My videos were just all around doing better. I don't actually remember if that happened. I feel like it probably happened in 2015. But, like, this is probably when the Why Good Anime is Hard to Make video blew up. for its. Uh, it got its second wind. Because that brought a shitload of views to my channel and to, like, all my big videos, like, got even more big. And then over here, uh, July 2016, this is because of the success of um, how to recognize a good anime in just one episode. So releasing a video that gets really popular is not just good in the first place. It's good for your old videos. And you, you'll be able to see this in recent times, too, when we eventually get to the, uh, the month of videos that I did in August of 2018. Because... Like, once the Deer Country Roll Stop video came out, a lot of the ones that had been doing okay suddenly were doing much better. And, um, likewise with the videos that came afterwards. Like, when, uh, the Sundere video kind of caught on, that brought a lot more views to the Shinsekai Yori video and, um, the, how they marketed and shit like that. So, yeah. So, you'll, you'll, if you were to compare these dates with dates of other big videos, which we'll, we'll end up getting to them, I'm sure, um, you'll see that every time a new video comes out that's big, it piques the interest in this one. I mean, even right here, you can see the day that... Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the day Dear Country Roll Stop came out, August 26th, and there's, like, a little spike there of an extra thousand, you know, like, double what it would normally get in a day just because a, a big new video came out. And, like, there's a rush of subs and people watching the old shit. So, yeah, this video now has a million fucking views. And, like, even around this point in 2015, it probably would have been at, like, uh, 350,000. Because um, the most I had gotten, like, in 2015, my biggest videos had gotten up to... Wait, 2015? So this is only a, a year after the video came out. Now I'm fucking trying to think. Because September 2015... Nothing even really all that major was coming out that month. Now I think about it. Like this, I think this is the second wind of, um, yeah, this is the second wind of that one video. This is when I hit a hundred K right here. It wasn't until, no, I don't even know. I'm fucking, I'm getting lost in the dates. Just trying to think about it. But like for a very long time, my biggest videos were all around 300 K like the top six or seven videos that I had, which are all going to come around the same time, really, um, all had like 350K thereabouts. And then when my biggest video blew up and got up to a million, a bunch of the other ones came with it. 
and it was slow progress. Like this video didn't hit a million until I think uh, late last year. So it had already been up for three years by the time it got a million views. Uh, so then I put out the reason I did the Sword Online video, if you don't know, is that I had been watching Log Horizon. I really loved Log Horizon, and it caused me to want to go back and watch Sword Art Online. I watched the show, hated it a lot more than expected, and made a video about it. So then I went back and finally finished Log Horizon, made a video about that as well. This also has a ton of views that were not there at the time. It also did not originally have a proper thumbnail, I don't think. Um, the reason that these two videos in particular got so much attention, especially the Log Horizon one, is that they were on the front of my channel. So a very long time, I had my channel structured so that there was um, a bunch of playlists right here on the front. I mean, similar to how it is now, except now I try to advertise my alt channels and stuff. And this Essential Digibro playlist, because I think it's it's the best way to get people started and to understand my sort of ethos behind making videos before they start actually watching them. But um, originally, there was like a six-video spread of like my biggest analysis videos like there was long form analysis short form analysis and general videos were like the three playlists so the first two things on the long form analysis playlist were log horizon and sword art online and then i think the ghost in the shell video that we're going to get to in a second and some other shit like that and all those videos would continually just get more views because they were on the front page of my channel and people really underestimate how much the front page of your channel fucking matters it matters a lot like I consistently get tons of views we'll talk about that more with especially this playlist and how powerful this particular playlist is um, so uh, I also still have my mode also productions channel around this time um, I'm still posting there with like random vlogs and shit so we've got a, a a video game review for the game Transistor. I think this is currently the least viewed uh, video on my channel with 6,000. Um, it might actually it might even be above some of the Eight Nights at Karno Kyokai videos, but uh, yeah, still we're not very successful. I did some I did a new useless anime knowledge video on Armitage the Third. Uh, you know, still doesn't have a lot of views to this day. Um, and then I started trying to do like more topical stuff on. Digibro After Dark. So I made a video about Turn Down for What, which I love. Um, this is another video that if it if this video had had a thumbnail, I think this would have been a huge success. Like, this is a great vlog, um, and, like, I really love it, and it's funny, and I think that it could have done a lot of numbers had it, had it been properly marketed. Oh, so anyways, I spent, like... I, I, something I really wanted to make apparent in this is the amount of time that used to happen between uploads because in every era of my content the the timing is always different because it depends on what the hell I'm working on how much research goes into the video how much time do I have to fuck around and make other shit right so you'll see that the Armitage the third video came out June 9th 2014 the Ghost in the Shell video then came out June 22nd. So it's almost like, what, that's, it's close to two weeks. And that's because I spent two weeks watching all of Ghost in the Shell and consuming every part of the franchise in between those two, those two videos. So like, you know, how much content I put out at any given time has always been very dependent on how long does it take to make the damn video. And in that case, it took about two weeks, you know. So, at, at this time, I was doing a thing where I was trying to talk about only cyberpunk shows, because I was really into cyberpunk. Um, I did Lane, or, or either cyberpunk or stuff, like, relevant to it, like being trapped in the internet or video games kind of stuff. So we had Lane, SAO, Log Horizon, fucking Armitage the Third, Ghost in the Shell, Eden of the East, and Psychopaths. And I think that's the end of the the um cyberpunk era and i was really excited at the time about all these videos this is another one that you know has way more views than it did when it came out um the most exciting thing about making these was that um like i hadn't seen a lot of anime from the last couple of years so like these were mostly shows i hadn't seen before and these are like first impression reviews that I've later gone back and, like, talked about in way more depth. So, like, this Psychopath Analytical Review is made right after I watched the show for the first time. It's not very good. I've made way better Psychopath videos since, you know. Um, this video, 10 must-see anime you can watch right now. 
This one also was not a huge success when it came out, but it was on the front page of my channel. And again, it originally didn't have a special thumbnail, but then I gave it this really fucking kick-ass High Bonnie Redmate thumbnail, and, like, literally as soon as I did that... Also, like, a lot of these, like, as soon as I gave them a thumbnail, they just literally rocketed. Like, they did way better. Because, and this happened much later, I, like, went back through the channel, and, like, all the... Um, you know what? Part of this might have been because I don't think I had a strike on my channel at the time that these were posted, but like it used to be that if you had a strike, you couldn't post original thumbnails. And so there was a long period where I didn't have any thumbnails just for that reason. And then I went back and gave new thumbnails to a bunch of the old videos once I had the ability to do it back. Um, here you can see I'm starting to catch on that thumbnails matter on the Digi Does Anime channel because I've started giving them the actual shows uh, you know, and this works out because if we look at the Sailor Moon Crystal episode one anime hype train, it's got 24,000 views, which is vastly more than, uh, you know, how much is on most of the stuff on that channel. So yeah, pretty, it was pretty, that one had like 10 K views out the gate. Like it was right away successful. And this is when I started to realize like, Oh shit. Like, yeah. Having, having these thumbnails fucking matters. Um, this 10 seconds of Terra online video, I think did okay when it came out and now it's, it's fairly successful. I was, um, my most successful anime blog post. Well, it wasn't an anime blog post, but the most successful post on my anime blog had been my stuff about Terra online. So I figured I'd capitalize on that on the channel. And I remember it doing like it did a, not as well as the sword online video, but it was like the second most popular thing I had put out at the time, um, since quitting pony. Um, more anime hype train shits, blah, blah, blah. Now I've lost it. This is where I had been watching so much anime that I, uh, like was dreaming about it and I was losing my mind. Um, this is a vlog where I, I do it an entire anime review while doing a toilet squat. Um, so then we get to Zankyo no Terror and there is a missing video here maybe it's just not in the playlist there should be a video about Zankyo no Terrace directing that's like 30 minutes long that had it got removed from YouTube a couple times I think it's up now though it might just be somewhere else it might be on daily motion I don't even know it had okay views so I did a second one the second one didn't do as well um so here's where I learned a major lesson because after all this shit that had gone down all the all this uh this crap I'd been putting out um, I really wanted to get into doing like really big research projects. And so I spent an absurd amount of time and effort to make tracing the lineage of Cowboy Bebop. And while this has 51,000 views now, at the time it had like less than 10 K and I had paid my brother Victor to edit it. And he did a really spectacular job of just like, uh, just, you know, very active editing, just a lot beyond anything I would have done at the time. And, um, but, like, I have a lot of problems with this video. I don't think it's very good. It's kind of just an info dump. And if you don't already care about all the people and, and like, shows being mentioned, you will have no fucking reason to give a shit about anything I talk about in this video. Also, the audio mixing is a little off. Um, I, I talk too fast with no gaps. Victor's uh, music choices were a little too loud in the mix. Um, so, yeah. It's a... More importantly than any of that, the thumbnail is fucking awful. So I still hadn't really truly lost my learned my lesson. I still even have it the same. I didn't even care to change it. This video could probably have 200,000 views by now for all I know if I'd actually changed the thumbnail. But I am such a fucking weird lazy asshole that I just... That, you know, I'm talking about all these things that like I've learned over time. I only just recently truly realized how many views my videos continue to gain over the course of time. Because... Like, generally, I look at the view counts on my most popular videos, and I look at the view counts on my most recent videos. I don't go through my whole history and look at how everything's changed, but, like, a lot of videos that literally had 5,000 views for, like, the whole first year they existed now have over 100K, you know? So it's, like, it can be really shocking how big the change is. I think the Space Dandy video has pretty okay views now, too. Um, just 23k never mind um due to youtube's draconian fucking rules about whatever 
Oh, and then we got random drunk ass anime history where I just got drunk and vlogged, and that's like something that would become sort of what the After Dark's whole tone is like. Like what After Dark is now is basically just oh, this. Fucking shit. I'm Dean Dillon. Welcome to my new show, Random Drunk Ass Anime History. The show yeah. You can see the beers I had drank up there on the shelf. All fucking light baby shit. What a fucking what a fucking noob I was. All right, so we've got these. Then I, I posted a bunch of BronyCon highlights videos because, like, I guess I figured if my audience is still largely pony people, um, you know, maybe they'll check this stuff out. Looks like they kind of did. They have okay views. But um, people don't generally care that much about con videos anyways. And this Otakon summary vlog did terribly. This had, like, 2,000 views, and I was, like wow this was you know it still only has five thousands this is one of my least watched videos of all time partly because there's no actual like there's well there's a little bit but there's barely any con footage in it because i you know didn't really film it um i just explained the con experience so yeah nobody gave a shit about that um depression reviews where i used my nendoroids to tell stories this is all just like the summer of 2014, I'm throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks. I have no idea what's going to work. Um, I'd gotten into Kill La Kill, and, like, uh, I thought Kill La Kill is super popular, so I'll talk about it. So I made a video about layered and meta narratives, a la Kill La Kill. Um, this had done shit views at the time. Then I made Kill La Kill and Space Dandy Embracing Young Unquantifiable. This is one of my favorite videos I've ever done. And at the time, it was like my outright favorite video I had ever done. And it got less than 10,000 views. It's got 52K now because it's in a playlist. I think it's in the Essential Digibro playlist. So I think that's where its views have come from. Did a Speed Racer review. Nobody cared. Uh, what Let's Plays podcast and Slice of Life anime have in common. Nobody cared. Uh, five anime for coping with a broken limb. This is a really funny video that I I love um, that I wrote to be kind of endless jest style. Nobody cared. Nobody still cares, even though it's 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 good, man. This is probably one of my more enjoyable videos. Like this is one that I would show to a party or something if I had to show them what my videos were like. Um, but finally, at long last, why good anime is hard to make. This was my first legitimate breakout success as an anime YouTuber. So you remember I started in May. I was initially getting shit views. I did okay on SAO. A little, like, decent on Log Horizon. I, you know, I'm getting like 20,000 on my best uh, videos. My most I think the SAO video had 25,000 at the time this came out. And it was still my biggest anime video. So, August 20th, I post this video... And then go into surgery because I my you know my foot was broken at the time. If you've heard the old Otakon stories and and looked at those videos we were just watching, so I go into the hospital and while I'm in the hospital, this video is like blowing up because I guess it had caught on on like r slash anime and I think on Tumblr, and it got up to seventy thousand views. The amazing number of 70,000. What an insanely high number of views. This video has 1,700,000 views now. So let's break it down. What is the lifetime success of this particular video? Well, as you can see, it was exactly two huge fucking spikes that basically were this video's entire lifespan. So you have the initial day one 30k. And right after that, 22K. So, yeah, th this is, well, is that day one or is that, no, day, I can't tell where this fucking thing starts. Either way, yeah, it got up to 70K in the first couple days. Excellent, beautiful, not really anything after that until all of a sudden, once again, on September 12th, 2015, sudden explosion. This video retakes off. Now, it just so happens... Or does it? That right before that, I had switched the thumbnail. This is when I did the big thumbnail change. Was uh, was right before this happened, and I don't think that was directly responsible for it. Um, but this video had like the image that's in here was the thumbnail, except that it was uh, smaller because it was this image appears in the video over the background that's in the video. So it was just that image, and so I just took the 
you know, the image and just made it full sized for the thumbnail. And not long after that, it gets up to a fucking million views. It, it literally just shot up in one fucking fell swoop. It was like insane how fast this thing, cause it, 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 it was, you know, even though it was already the biggest video on my channel, it like just long and far surpassed everything else on its quest to a million. And so like for a while it was, I had a video with a million views. I had a video with like 350 K, which was SAO part two, which we're going to get to, um, another one that was near the same, which was, um, what is anime and what isn't. And then I think the one piece video was up there and then the SAO diatribe. And that was like my videos that had a lot of views and that was it, you know, but anyway, that one obviously blew up in a huge second win. Now it's not even one of my top three. No, it's, is it still number two? It might still be number two, actually. I don't know why I thought it was even further down than that, but, um, so right after that, I made this video called a beginner's guide to blowing money on anime merch, which was supposed to be sort of a sequel to it. And it's extremely well produced for, Oh God, what the fuck is all this shit? Um, you know, I had like all these lights, I had Victor shooting me and he had a slider and we used the slider to take these like product shots. I'm trying to see if I can fucking find one. Um, and while this now has 115,000 views, again, this is one that was on the front page of my channel for a very long time. Because in my my playlist that was, like, other videos that are not analytical, the first two videos were Why Good Anime is Hard to Make, followed by Beginner's Guide to Blowing Money on Anime Merch. So this video had not really done, you know, probably not even 10k views when it came out, but through being in that playlist, it, it eventually grew. Monogatari series analysis, same story once again. This video had like 15K maybe at the time, and it blew up from being in the playlist on the front of my channel in the long form anime analysis videos section. So yeah, all the views came from that. And you may have noticed that like these videos with huge view counts, they're not like, they're visually nothing. Like this video is 53 minutes long and it's all just set to game footage. Like people don't even give a shit about like what the visual content of the video is. They just want to hear you talk about a series that's relevant and you know, they'll click on it if it has a nice thumbnail. So like that's, I, I eventually learned that, but I didn't, you know, still didn't really understand at the time how important that stuff was. Uh, your taste should always be evolving. This is where I had a broken foot and I started recording stuff like downstairs and writing just like random scripts. Here's the first thing Devu edited for me. None of this was doing particularly sp anything special. Why One Piece works so well is the next one that was a big hit. So this came out in September, September 18th. You can see it has 700,000. We're going over to the fucking analytics, baby. Any of Anything that's in my like top 10, I'm definitely going to inspect the analytics. Because I want to know. All right, here we go. This is going to be the same story as Why Good Anime is Hard to Make. We're going to see... That there was uh, initially, it did 6,000 on the first day, so it was doing pretty all right, you know, for, for me at the time. And then, once again, September 2015, sudden huge explode. This one started blowing up a little even earlier, it seems like. This one just fucking was having a time. I definitely think I hit 100k around here, and then switched all my thumbnails not long after. And just, like, between those two things, shit went crazy. But this video, like just had a sudden surge and became one of my like top five biggest and it still does pretty okay you know it still gets still gets a few hundred views every day so yeah um all right it's all about pressing your buttons did nothing madoka magica didn't even do that well at first that was a shock like this is one i covered because i thought like oh like people just want to hear me talk about stuff that's really popular and that they like this now has two hundred thirty three thousand views um, once again, this is one that was on the front page of the channel for a long time because I thought it's a popular show. Surely people will click on it. Initially, this had done, let's see, let's go. I want to know the analytics on this one too. I did not know this video had this many views. Um, you know, this is the exciting part of going through your own channel's history and just being like, what the fuck? This video, this video didn't have that many views before. It looks like its biggest thing was the original. So I guess it's just been a steady growth over time. 
let's see what it had day one day one it had 2497 so yeah like nothing impressive at first but just the overall you know peaks and valleys of the chip like look th there's nothing even special here like there's no day that this had a huge resurgence the most views it got in one day was 2400 so like just the sheer force of you know being digi bros video on madoka magica for four fucking years was enough to now it has 233,000 views this is how important just time is to your channel now that i know this i'm gonna change the thumbnails on everything that uh that that isn't su successful um so this Zenkyo no Terra video did not do particularly well and also I took it down. This is actually an unlisted video because I was so embarrassed with how bad it was. And um, and Demolition D's video on Aldenoa Zero basically made the same point better, so I just hid mine in shame. Um, the Space Dandy video didn't do shit. Designed to go on forever, Shonen Jump Manga didn't do shit. This is where we finally enter um, the month where I did a video every single day all month. So October 2014, I was like, I made a bunch of bets with a bunch of people I knew and said, like, I bet I can do a video every day for an entire month. And I think there was a couple hundred dollars on the line. Um, so not only was I going to do it for that reason, but it was just an attempt to, again, throw a bunch of darts at the board, see what happens, see if I can get people to care about my fucking channel. So uh, it started with this Fate Zero video. Which has pretty decent views now. This one did like okay relative to its time, you know. Obviously, it's got a lot more, but like to to compare to what was really going on in the channel. Here's the next day's entry, you know. Why I'm excited for Gundam G Reco 12K. This probably had 2K at the time. Uh, Bizarre Alien Biopunk manga. This oh god, I fucking clicked on it. I fuck. Wait, I can use this. I can just use this, right? I can just use this sidebar. And we can just do it this way. Does it even make a difference? Does it make a bit of difference, guys? Um, yeah, even these videos, once again, seeing 10K, even that is a surprise to me. Because these did so poorly when they came out. Um, also, it looks like I used the same thumbnail on the uh, Log Horizon Season 2 Episode 1 anime hype trade that I then used on the actual video I had done. That's hilarious. I think this Fate video did okay. The Eight Nights of Kara no Kyokai did extremely bad. These are the videos that have the least views on my channel. But they were kind of the core of this whole month, of this whole experiment. Because, like... Why does it keep starting me from that, like, really arbitrary point in this playlist? I fucking hate YouTube playlists so much. Like, the conceit of why I was going to do a video every day for a month is that I was already working on all these, and I was trying to have them all done before the month started. So there would already be eight days worth of videos spoken for. Um, and also I had this video, the problem with adapting fight scenes, uh, in DeVue's hands at the time. And I think this one did pretty okay when it came out. Um, it's got 100k views now. But again, most of the stuff that came out this month was not doing amazing. Um, God, okay, I'm just looking back through until we get to finally your anime sucks. Sword Art Online, part uh, Sword Art Online two, part one. One of my biggest videos. So this was it. Literally, while I was posting a video every single fucking day, I was also working on this. Um, and I I took about a week and a half, I think, to make it in the background of everything else I was doing. But once again, as we will find in the analytics. It's not like this video was a huge smash hit when it came out. It came out to about 5,836 views. Now, that's pretty good for the time, and it stayed pretty good for a while. So I think this video, I think it was probably about like, like it was probably close to like 50k by the end of the year, going by what I'm seeing here. Um, but again, we've got another peak in 2015, at the same time that everything else has a peak. Then we've got an even bigger peak in 2016 when, once again, the uh, How to Recognize a Terrible Anime in Just One Episode video came out. Look at that. 10,000 views of just runoff from another video. Um, and then, later in 2016, this is probably the asterisk score sucks. No, that was 2015. What the hell is this then? What came out at the end of 2016? 
Uh, May, do you remember what came out at the end of 2016 on the Digibro channel that would have pr prompted a huge resurgence of views for the Sword Art Online analytical uh, videos? I'm trying to think. Um, fuck. End of 2016. So, post... Post the whole big... So you would have been a fan by this point. Um, I literally don't remember. We'll have to see when we get there. If we ever get there. Because this is taking a very long time. But I expect it as much. Anyway. Uh, you know. The next thing that did really well is what is anime and what isn't. Another Devu edited video. And this, this pretty much... I think this was uh, even more successful than the SAO video at the time. I think this one was like, um, I think this one was a pretty big deal right off the bat. And I don't think it ever topped. What the fuck is happening here? I clicked the wrong thing. Um, Japanese colloquialism, shortening the word animation. It's really kind of funny that this one's fallen by the wayside uh, pretty hardcore by comparison to some of the other stuff that's towards the top of my, you know, most seen list. Because, yeah, this is one that it just hasn't had enough resurgences compared to the other big ones. This one was 12,000 views day one. So this is probably my biggest day one break other than uh, why good anime is hard to make. Still does pretty decently for a while. I remember this one in the SAO video being pretty neck and neck for years. And then obviously it had a big resurgence at the same point as everything else in 2015. But um, yeah, after that it's completely fallen off. It does not do shit for views today. Nobody gives a fuck about what is anime and what isn't anymore. Um, that conversation has gotten very tired and nobody wants to have it. These last few videos from the month did shit views. They're kind of just vlogs and weird shit. None of it did very well. Um, and then, uh, following up that month, I did Why Context Matters, A Meditation on Lucky Star. This is another one that was just like, what, 15k views at the time? Now it's got 212. It's another one that sat on the, the front of my channel for a very long time. You can fit a lot of videos on the front of your channel, let me tell you. Um, and it's important. Then we got the K-On videos. Uh, this represents the first sort of problem era in my channel where... The original part one got taken down. I got a strike. Two strikes, in fact, for this one video from me trying to re-upload it um, with, like, some slight fixes. But, yeah, like, 142,000 views. That's obviously built up over time. Once again, these were on the front of the channel. Uh, they were not extremely successful at the time they came out, but, like, I didn't expect them to be. So then I thought... And this is, like, probably the most unfortunate and ill-considered series I've ever done. But just as an experiment, we're going to do this together, team, you and I. Because we've seen now the power of what changing a thumbnail and what, like, you know, enough gross over time can do to a video. This w was the, uh, the top 20 anime of 2014, and I fucked it up in multiple ways. One, what I didn't realize is that the point of top 10 videos is that you don't say what the shows are going to be until you click on the video. Even if you were doing it in this style where you were making a video for every single day and you were numbering them, it would probably be better not to say what show is there. Because if it's a show that nobody cares about, nobody will click on the video. So, like, the view counts on these are pretty much, like, you know... I mean, they're all shit because the thumbnails are terrible and I didn't have that huge of an audience at the time. But, like, the views on No Game, No Life were significantly better than the views on I Can't Understand What My Husband Is Saying, you know? Um, but, like, again, you can see that these thumbnails are really bad. Because at the time, the way I was doing my editing was that I had to project an image onto a fucking weird tv screen this was my way of getting past copyright it's actually pretty entertaining i like it but um it doesn't work as a thumbnail or as a permanent editing style so yeah uh these did really bad and i'm not surprised even though they came out one after another this was like every day for 20 days i had a new video on the channel so two months out of this year at the very back i had put out a video for most of the month like on a daily basis then we slow down considerably. However, 
right after the month. Like, so here we go. Number one, top anime 2014, number one is Hunter Hunter, right? And I think this one has the best views out of any of the ones in the series. Yeah, 42K. The day after that, I publish my full analysis video, and it's another one of my biggest videos, 603K. Much like the story of the last ones, uh, this is another case where it started pretty strong. It continued growing because it was on the main channel, and it's about a really popular show. And I think it also had... Yeah, so we can see that the views went from... They were pretty good right from the fucking start, basically. And uh, there's, a, there's a few little peaks here and there, but... You know, it's not quite as crazy as some of the other ones that we looked at. Still, though, really successful. And then my next video, Gurren Lagann vs. Kill La Kill at the Matic Rundown, was also pretty successful. And this is really where I started, I think, to take off as an anime YouTuber was between these two videos. Like, this is where it really began. Um, and that last one was January 1st. This one was January 12th. And that's just how long it took to make this video because it was I had to watch both Kill La Kill and Gurren Lagann and do a ton of research. So yeah, um, these two videos were kind of like, I started to get a little bit of traction because I talked about really highly relevant popular shows in an interesting way. So the next one I did, light novel trends can't possibly be this interesting. Like since those last two, on, on top of being about like, you know, relevant and interesting stuff, they were kind of high effort videos. There was a lot of editing that went into them. They're, they're on the longer side at 15 minutes. Um, I wanted to keep that trend going. So this video was intended to continue that trend and it came out like a couple days later. Uh, this video did not do well at all. The fact that it has 157,000 views now is like astounding. In fact, I, I, this is another one where I think I need to look at the analytics to figure out what happened because like it was not a success when it came out. Um, and it was sad. I guess this is just another case of gaining views over time. So it looks like its biggest day was day one with how many views just a mere 4,000 so yeah like just again the sheer force of being on the digibro channel for long enough and it, it's an interesting video like I like this video um I thought it, it makes a very unique case that I don't think anybody else had made at the time but like uh yeah it just wasn't about anything relevant and also the thumbnail is a fucking clusterfuck so then we got the the your anime sucks videos continue those all do well um, between the Your Anime Sucks videos continuing to do well and those two I mentioned before, you know, again, I start to become a bigger name. And because of the fact that I already had a really big sub count, like, in spite of the fact that my view counts weren't that good, my sub count was still, you know, 70,000. So I think that's probably why I got onto Did You Know Anime, for instance, because, like, you know, I wasn't really a huge voice in anime at the time that this came out, but, uh, you know, I was starting to catch on. I think this guy had seen my Light Novel Trends video, and that was what made him want to uh, want to work with me because he was really interested in that as like a, you know, oh, I fucking completely skipped over. So here was another really big one. Death Note, Attack on Titan and how to direct mainstream anime. So this is where I get to the point where I have, you know, fully realized that the best way forward is to talk about the most popular shows like and honestly, I'm sh almost shocked this video doesn't have way the fuck more views. Um, but like. This one, uh, I'm sorry, I was just distracted by the wine pouring <laughs> going on. This one is, uh, was, it was an immediate success because it was shared on Kotaku. There was a whole Kotaku post about this video when it came out. And so it had like 50,000 views, I want to say, in the first couple of days. and was pretty successful. And like... I, I made this because after doing those last couple of videos and being like, wow, my Hunter Hunter and Gurren Lagann videos were super successful. Obviously, everybody cares about those shows. What shows do people care about the most? And this is the birth of the whole Mal thing. And you may notice I use Mal stats a lot in my videos because it's just a very easy visual shorthand. But if you go over to most popular, you will see that the top two are Death Note and Attack on Titan. Uh, SAO used to be higher up than attack on titan i think um it also used to have a much higher score but uh but yeah like because those two shows were so popular and then i realized well shit they're both from the same director tetsuro araki like surely that's a video in itself because like i don't really care about either show but i like the director and i like the idea of talking about him that way so yeah that was a pretty successful one um no Kome and nihilism was not 
So I think we're getting close. We're getting pretty close. Yeah, here we go. YouTube finally fucked me. So it's early 2015. My channel's finally starting to get moving. Uh, and it goes down. All of that success that I just showed you in January, that was all January of 2015. Bunch of successful videos. February starts, and what had happened was that somebody had somebody had just like false flagged one of uh, my uh, my JoJo video from the top 20 anime of the year, um, and it had gotten taken down for some reason, and like that took the whole channel with it. And for a while, I thought it was just gone. Like I had I didn't really know enough about the process of how to get it back to believe that it would come back, so I just kind of thought that I might be fucked. And I think that this was the case in which I had, like, the, the with the, because the, the first two strikes were both in the K-On video. And I think that I had appealed the K-On video strike right before the JoJo strike happened or something like that. And, um, like, just by sheer happenstance of me happening to have appealed it right before my channel went down, um, two weeks later it came back. However, in the meantime, I was like, well... You know, I have to, I have to do my career. So I made a couple of videos that were posted originally on the After Dark channel. So visual breakdown, tension and payoff, and Kill Kill's opening scene. This was originally posted to Digibro After Dark. Did not really particularly have amazing views or anything. Um, once the channel was back here on the twelfth. Oh, here you go. There's a whole fucking uh, explanation here. Like once the video came back, I or the channel came back, I posted it to the channel. I think the visual cohesion and flow one had also been on After Dark originally. So yeah, I just came back, re-uploaded them. These videos were not, they were not massively successful at the time. However, they were hugely influential to my reputation. Because unbeknownst to me, this is when people started taking me seriously. Because up until this point, I'm just doing, like, analytical reviews. Some of them are in-depth. Some of them say some interesting things about the shows. And I had done all these, like, breakdowns of, like, industry history and shit, but nobody really cared. It was when I started breaking down visuals, dis like, because nobody on YouTube was doing it. Like, people would talk about anime, and they would just talk about story. Like, they would do reviews where, like, visuals had, like, a section that was like, oh, yeah, and, and the graphics are good, you know? So I was like, let's talk about visuals in more depth, which is happening elsewhere on the internet, obviously, but like, let's bring it to YouTube. So I made these and, uh, you know, even though the view counts weren't incredible initially, um, some of them have obviously grown, but these are also ones that again, were like on the front of the channel. Cause I consider them important. They're also in the essential Digibro playlist. So, um, so yeah, like a lot of people who, who are more serious anime fans, started taking me more seriously in this per period because of this, like the fact that these videos were, you know, breaking down this aspect that is kind of undervalued in anime critique. Um, yeah, here we can see this one had like 4,000 views initially did okay over time. Nothing too spectacular, just been around for a long time. Um, so we continue and then, so here's where we start digi bros as well. Cause digi bro, the channel came down again. Uh, no, you know what it was? Okay, now I remember the whole story. So what happened was that the, the channel went down at the start of February, and the reason was that the there's the two k on strikes and the JoJo strike. The JoJo strike got, got fixed, because I had appealed it uh, through, like, through email or something, and they realized it was a false flag, and they fixed it. And it was only after the channel came back that I appealed the second k on strike. I couldn't appeal the original one because I had deleted the video. And if you delete a video, you can't appeal the strike that's on it. And uh, the one on part two, I think I had appealed. But while I was waiting for that, um, no, you know what? That doesn't make sense either because I, I, obviously that version doesn't exist on YouTube. So maybe i maybe that one just got flagged i don't even fucking remember i just know that there was the 2k on videos and then my shiro bako video that i had made during the month of october also got flagged and if not for the fact that i had flat like i had contested one of those claims my channel would still be gone you know but uh thankfully i had contested it just in time and uh my channel got brought back so once again i was gone and in these periods that i was gone 
uh, I spent most of my time sitting around watching Game Grumps, especially at this point. Because after the first one, I was just like, I'll post stuff on After Dark. Uh, you know, I still have a Patreon as my main way of getting paid. It doesn't really matter that much whether I'm on YouTube. But, like, once I lost it again, I was just like, all right, uh, life is hell. So I, sp I had spent, like, all of February just marathoning the entire Dan era of Game Grumps up to that point. And then me and Victor started recording Let's Plays, and we recorded them in huge batches. Like, we did all of the Sonic Adventure videos in two days, and then the Kirby videos, like, the next day. Um, so, like, and then I would just stagger the releases so that it came out, like, once a day um, for a very long time. So we were, like, months ahead of ourselves in the recording of Digi Bros, and as a result, it was able to come out smoothly. Like, that was my idea, was if I want to do a Let's Play series, it should come out daily, and the only way it can do that without being a huge stress-inducing nightmare would be to uh, to release it this way. So, in the meantime, while the channel is down, I decide, fuck YouTube, it's not working out, I'll just make stuff for Google Drive and advertise it on YouTube, um, you know, I'll just, and, like, release it to my patrons directly. So I made the spirited away analysis, um, and... I don't even know if it's fucking available anywhere right now. I don't know if this Google Drive link works. No, it doesn't. So, um, yeah, I don't even know where. Uh, I, I guess I probably have to re-upload it. I probably have to put it in the archive or something. But, uh, but yeah, it's it was, um, it was like right after I made the video that the channel came back and I immediately made a vlog about it. But, like, I designed the video in such a way that it couldn't make it onto YouTube. Like, I had just decided, like, fuck YouTube, I'm going to do what I want. And it's like a 30-minute video of, you know, like, uncut clips. Um, and I guess it did okay. So then we had Psychopaths versus Psychopaths 2, What Happened? And this was a series that I was extremely excited about. I put a lot of effort into it. Uh, I wrote it all in January. And then I passed it off to Devu. So, like, I you know, I had already written this whole fucking thing in the background of all the other shit I was doing, uh, maybe January and February. I don't even, I don't, I, I just know that it, it was a long time between when I wrote it and when it finally came back to me. And, uh, these didn't do that great. Like you can see, even now it's got 56 K and part of that is cause they had to be uploaded elsewhere. So like all that I had on the channel was just the redirects to them as opposed to the actual videos. So they, um, you know, those, those, the redirects videos weren't that successful and then the actual videos were even less now eventually i finally you know grouped all of those into one video and re-released it and the re-release has done way better um the reason we're now scrolling through this again is that i reached the top of the playlist as was presented on the page that we were on at a mere 2100 deep i think this is probably gonna have to be a multi-part series because uh, we've been going over an hour and I'm getting tired of it. So, yeah, this is this is your DigiBro his This is just how much fucking shit I make and how much there's to talk about. So at the point we've stopped at, we're in early 2015. My most successful videos are Why Good Anime is Hard to Make at number one with probably like, uh, if we're in early 2015, it's probably got like close to 100,000 views. Then we've got the Sword Art Online video that, uh, you know, sort of, well, the next one actually would probably be uh, what is anime and what isn't with like 50k. The SAO 2 part 1 video is probably around the same. Um, you know, we've got a couple of fairly successful videos. We've got the the Gurren Lagann and Kill La Kill comparison. The, um, the fucking uh, Hunter Hunter video, which is fairly successful. And some of them had, a, like, uh, I think the Fate Zero and Madoka videos had, like, more than most of my channel. Like, I remember Madoka having 20k for a really long time, and that being, like, semi-impressive for an anime video that I had made. But, like, you know, nothing I had was cracking the mold to get above uh, why good anime is hard to make. And that wasn't going to happen until, again, mid-2015, when I... Hit 100K, changed all my thumbnails, and, um, you know, YouTube started pushing me a lot harder. And I would say that that's when, like, that was the point when this became, like, financially viable to do anime. 
Because the reason that I was that I was able to have such a long grace period of getting into figuring out how to do it is that like my rent was hella low. I had been making pretty good money on Patreon as a brony guy, and a lot of those Patreons just patrons just stuck around. Like they didn't immediately leave just because I switched to anime. Um, I would say that like you know over time I bled like half of them. And then I started gaining more not long after that, you know, and I didn't need that much to live on. So like I was willing to just take whatever time it took. And like, because there were little successes along the way, it was like, you know, it was heartening and I'd done it before I'd built a channel and been successful before. So it was like, I know this is possible, but like really for most of 2014, I was not making a whole lot of money, not getting a whole lot of views, not really a name in the anime community, not really respected. Even the videos I have now from that era that are now considered to be like big fucking videos were not that big. Um, you know, and videos that were smaller from that back then, uh, ha are way the fuck bigger now. Even stuff that you don't think about that nobody think considers to be like a classic video nonetheless have like way the fuck more views just from the sheer force of time so that's about where we're probably gonna leave off i just want to find the psychopath videos again so i could just like round that off there's so much digi bros in this fucking period because at some point it became two episodes a day so you know it's probably like there was both pokemon snap and ocarina of time coming out at the same time because we gotten so far ahead of ourselves that i couldn't even like relate to the episodes we made anymore um and meanwhile, on the main channel, like, you know, I'd kind of put, I'd put most of my eggs in the psychopaths basket and it wasn't really coming to fruition. The videos were not getting amazing views. And then I also started work on my first gaming series, Cool Girl Games. And these did dismally. These still have dismal views. This is the second one, which has the worst views, 7,000. It had like 2K um, and the Chantilly's one was just as bad. So like, while while I had Devu working on Psychopaths, like, my thought was, oh, he'll be doing the big anime videos, and I'll be able to sneak in some video game videos, and I'll be able to... Because at the time, I still didn't want to just be an anime channel. I wanted it to be, like, all kinds of shit. It was just that I had gotten so excited about anime in 2014, because so much good shit was coming out, and I was catching up on what I'd missed, that, like, all I wanted to talk about was anime. But, like, at this point, I'm like, all right, I want to work the, the, the games back in, but the game series I tried was completely unsuccessful. So, during this period, it's just, like, you're getting lots of these Digibros, uh, and then, like, here, finally, at the, like, this is the point where I would say this is the end of the first uh, Digibro era, is right before a Tale of Memories video. Um, so, it's a pr kind of a great place to stop, because I would say that my mentality shifts up to this point, because... Um, you know, initially it was, like, all cyberpunk videos, and then it was, like, the months of videos, and then just, like, popular shows or whatever, anything I have something to say about, um, and then the Psychopath series, and when that didn't particularly succeed, it was kind of like, let's reconsider the approach. Um, this F video is is very different, very experimental, but it came from the, the place of, like, let's go back and just, like, find anime that I like that I haven't talked about and just do analytical videos about them. Like no theme, no concept, no, like this is a month of this, none of that shit, no series. It was just like, here's a video about this. And right after that was when I started trying to do seasonal shit. So next time we'll talk about how unsuccessful I was at doing seasonal shit at first. Uh, how this continues to just be the story of when do we get to the part where I suddenly take off and become extremely successful. Um, so yeah, I might not even have to do that. You might get the point at this point. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you demand more of this or not, if anybody gives a shit, bye.